everybody. I'm Marga Malachowski and my pronouns are she, her. I'm an education and outreach coordinator for the network of the National Library of Medicine. And welcome you, welcoming you to Blossom, building lifelong opportunities for strength, self-care, outlook, morale, and mindfulness. So we have a few housekeeping items. As some of you are gonna hear this over and over again, but there's always gonna be new people in session. So I wanna make sure you know that, um, let me advance my slides. There is an event hashtag. It's hashtag Blossom 2021. Yesterday on Twitter, I saw someone say, what is this Blossom 21? There's some great tweets coming out about it. So that is us. Um, for chat with your fellow attendees, please use the chat tab on the right in that conversations panel. If you have a question for the presenter, please submit them in the Q&A tab, and I will be collecting them and um, asking, um, I'm sorry, we're going to be talking about weathering the storms of change, speaking of weather, with our speaker, Wendy Peters. Um, and I'll be um, giving Wendy the questions at the end of her presentation. This session is being closed captioned to action at access the captions, please go to nnlm.gov slash blossom cc. And just a reminder that by attending any of these sessions, you have agreed to our code of conduct. I know we're all professionals here. We appreciate your uh, cooperation. And just to go over our acronyms, um, to sh this, this is who is bringing you this wonderful program. The NIH is the National Institutes of Health, which is the leading medical rich agency for the United States. And right now, many of you are familiar with the National Center for Allergies and Infectious Diseases, where Dr. Fauci is the director. But that's just one of many institutes and centers at the NIH. NLM is the National Library of Medicine, which is an institute of the NIH and is the world's largest biomedical library and produces electronic information resources such as Medline Plus and PubMed. NNLM is the network of the National Library of Medicine, and we are the outreach program of the NLM. RMLs are regional medical libraries, and that's where those the network sits in, in eight different regions of the country to produce regional and national programs. And now I am going to turn it over to Wendy. Thank you, Margo. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, my name is Wendy Cavejio Kalani Peters. And I'd like to start by acknowledging, um, because this is a, a national conference, maybe even international, I'm not exactly sure. I'd like to acknowledge the First Peoples across this nation and, and the continent, and recognize that their sovereignty was never ceded. And I'd like to pay my respects, elders, past, present, and emerging, and to those native cultures for their continued connections to land and community. And with that, I would like to introduce myself in a more additional way as is um, congruent with my culture. My name is Wendy Kavehio Kalani Peters and I am a native Hawaiian daughter. I was born and raised on the island of Oahu to native parents. And my roots, my Hawaiian roots at least, extend as far back as there have been Hawaiians in the islands. I'm a community psychologist and a personal evolution coach. And I thank you all for uh, joining my session today. And I want to thank the, um, the NNLM for inviting me to be part of this uh, conference today. So with that, I am going to share, and, and pardon me, I have dogs, they are locked out, but for those of you in virtual land, you know how it goes, and I, and I extend my deepest apologies for that. Um, okay, so um, the name of my talk is Weathering Storms of Change, 
Rebounding from disruptive life challenges. Sorry about that. Okay, so this is about me that I that I just um, that I just finished introducing myself, and this is an overview of my talk. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about how we got to this place we're all at, and I imagine why you've joined my session today. Um, I want to uh, expound a little bit on on what we've all been dealing with, and then recapitulate by by checking in on what we're seeking and, and the kinds of things we need to do. At that point, I'm going to take a brief intermission with all of you staying here. You know, you can leave if you want, but uh, I'm going to do a, a mindful minute, which is a, a, a short breathing exercise. I'll tell you more about it when we get there. I'm going to talk about... Um, I'm going to talk about mnemonic that is SNAP, give more advice and suggestions, and leave some time at the end for any questions and answers you may have for me. So let's get going. How did we get here? Well, if you look at my um, at, at the images that I've that I put into this slide, you know. Uh, I really disdain people that read off of the PowerPoint slide. So I try to use a lot of imagery so that I can talk to you and, and that you can uh, listen to what I'm saying versus try to listen to me and read at the same time. So we've been on a roller coaster ride for, for a few years now for, for a number of reasons. Front and center of this slide is, is the COVID virus. and. Um, and we all know what's that, what that's like. We all know how that has changed our lives. Um, and that has been, that I think was the culmination of so many other things that, that led up to that, which was, you know, there, there, the politics in this country, and I'm not going to get political in this talk, but, you know, there was a lot of political tension resulting in a lot of racial tension, resulting in a lot of policy changes. There was a lot of activism in the last few years leading up to this. We had BLM, we had Me Too, we had LGBTQ rights. We've got um, a lot of people who want to come into this country, a lot of people who are already here who are not very happy with the way things are going. And, and then COVID came along and it really, it was like the tidal wave that washed over all of us and, and, and none of us were spared. And I, and when I say none of us, I'm not even just talking about the United States. I'm talking about, I'm talking about the entire world. N no one was spared from this. And so, um, you know, is it any wonder that a lot of us are, are on our last nerve, are, you know, are just, um, you know, we're, 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 we feel like we're walking on thin ice every day. We're not, we're not really sure how to recover because this has been such a massive, like I said, it's like a tidal wave that has washed over us all. It has affected every single person. None of us have been isolated from this and it has affected each and every one of us in a different way. And um, and this these things are all above and beyond our normal everyday stressors, you know, like um, getting getting the kids to school out the door into school on time, or 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 making all your meetings and getting that proposal done for work, or uh, you know, getting the house clean because we're having company or, or, or just anything like that. These are normal stressors. All of these societal pressures have abounded for so long now. And, um, and they've, and they've certainly taken their toll. So what are we dealing with? Well, 
in 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 the medical field or in psychology particularly you know the these stressors these stressors are called allostatic loads and it's it's like i just described to you that we've got all these normal stressors but then all of a sudden we have this big tsunami of it, it seems like everything just um imploding exploding washing over us it but but no one was spared and as a result the allostatic loading has predominantly um you know caused a lot of fear especially where illness is concerned especially where covid is concerned many of us are dealing with grief because we've had losses um or some of us are recovering from from illness from loss um it's also brought the racial inequalities that we have lived with on a daily basis. It's brought those more to the surface. So while you do see in the media reports of, of activism, of violence, of all of these kinds of things going on, um, for those of you who, well, I, I'm... I'm not sure who all is attending this conference, but it's sponsored by the medical librarians. Um, and I, and I, for one, uh, do a lot of work in health disparities. So for me, the racial equalities have really surfaced and I have seen them most clearly in the disparities that have come to the surface medically through all of this and how a lot of these marginalized communities have not only had higher rates of of illness but they, they have also had higher rates of of loss and and death um we don't have answers for this just yet it's too new <clears throat> but something that i that has become a common issue was a term that one of my colleagues uh she did a a news report recently on the on the national news and she was talking about um corona somnia have any of you heard of that term yet a lot of people have been having troubles uh with sleep sleep issues not getting good sleep and they're calling it corona somnia because all of this tidal wave of stressors that we have been living under and um has really impacted our mental health and 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 it's showing up in in sleeplessness and sleep issues and so professionals are now um have now coined the term corona somnia and so what does this mean um we're actually undergoing a major shift, a major culture change. And uh, again, I talked about the marginalization for ethnic communities, but a lot of this activism is about dismantling the, the systemic racism that has been the elephant in the living room for so many years. And, and, and yet, you know, despite approaching it from many different angles by many different people over the years it it could just never get enough um leverage to break the dam if you will and i think the dam has finally broken now um you know and there are a lot of us there who are advocating for equity and we're becoming more and more a global community because as as i mentioned earlier the pandemic didn't just affect the US, it affected the entire world. And in that, I think a lot of people have 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 become more aware of of how we are all connected and interconnected. And um and that's gonna change a lot of a lot of things of the way we think about how we do things on an everyday basis. You know people talk about a new normal but but what it what what is a new normal um you know what what does that mean we don't know yet but what i can say is that um you know there there's less time and less money part of these stressors are that people are working harder there's been job loss um job instability there are uh, there are going to be rising costs and inflation we've already seen the cost of gas go up 
75 cents just in the last month or so, 75 cents a gallon. Uh, people are worried about safety and security. All of these ways, can you, can you see where I'm heading with all of this? There, um, there's just so much. It's, it's literally mind blowing. And that's why I'm, I'm what I'm here to, here to talk about in that all of these things are, are whoops, wrong one. No, I guess that is the right one. My, my notes are out of order. Pardon me. Um, but, uh, but yeah, that's, that's what we're here to talk about. So in the psychology community, we have a term called weathering. And yeah, weathering is a common term. It's not always used for <laughs> psychological purposes, but I, I have these images to give you an idea of these before and after pictures. You see the statue um, uh, on your left, on the left-hand side of the screen, uh, you know, almost 60 years later or, or just a little over 60 years later, and you see how the detail in it has, has weathered away. Then there's a house. Um, a house that was struck by a, a tornado. It was it was not only decimated, but it was uh, then leveled to its foundation so that it could start again. And that's kind of where I'm going to you know pick up here is that all of us have I think many of us have elements of what you see in these images of of weathering. Um, In the psychology community, we we characterize it as a, as cumulative and multi multi dimensional stress, which I was just uh, finished talking about. That also results in high effort coping. What what does that mean? It means that you know there are some things that 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 nag at you or get under your skin, and you can just brush them off and and continue on. And then there are the things that just you can't seem to shake it. Um, and when this weathering happens and we have this cumulative and multidimensional stress, it gets under our skin and it impacts our social and behavioral pathways. So how does this show up? Well, it shows up physically, socially, and emotionally. In, in in many, many different ways. Now, you know, and, and for some people it's extreme and for others, you know, they're, they're a little more able to cope, but I guarantee you it's, it's impacting everyone. Um, I know for me, the holidays were particularly tough. I am grieving and recovering from a loss and having to go through the entire season or period of COVID without being able to um, connect with those whom I have emotional ties with, having to have that physical distance and separation. And um, while I've made the best of my socialization through the virtual world, and everybody is now familiar with Zoom and also Zoom fatigue, um, it's not been a normal grieving process. It's been a very difficult process. Um, I talked about coronasomnia, negative health behaviors, uh, weathering shows up in negative health behaviors like coronasomnia. There's a uh, poor, e how many of you, <laughs> and I'm not calling anybody out, but you know, they, what do they call it? Like the, they used to call it the the college 15 or something. And now it's like the Corona 20 where we've all gained weight because we've been sitting at home doing zoom time instead of out and about and being active. So a lot of us, you know, are, are eating more poorly and gaining weight. Our health is declining somewhat. Um, okay. I, I don't mean to out myself, but you know, and I, and I'm certainly, I'm, I'm, I'm barely a social drinker. But I've increased my alcohol intake. And so, um, you know, my, my blood sugars have gone up some because I'm, I'm, I'm drinking more. So there's a lot of things that they may seem insidious, but it's taken its toll on, on all of us. I, I don't think I'm alone. I know I'm not alone. Um, 
I wish this could be more of a two way than just through the chat, but I'll catch you on, on your comments and questions when we break. Uh, blood pressure, people are having migraines. I say dis-ease, dis-ease, because disease, disease are a result of, of stress, pressure, of being ill at ease with our lives and our lifestyles. And that's generally the origin of where chronic disease or even serious disease can start. And if anything, if there's ever been a time where people have been impacted by uh, these kinds of these kinds of elements that promote and encourage disease, it would be now. It would be during this period that we've all lived through. And you know, I'll talk about Corona, but that's that was really just the culmination of all of these other things combined. So it's not just Corona. And while I love to blame the coronavirus, again, all of these other problems were not necessarily spawned or caused by the coronavirus. A lot of them just happened to be exacerbated and amplified by the coronavirus. Um, and then again, as I talked about health disparities previously, these, these elements of weathering are also exacerbated and are also further magnified by social stratification. And that is, that is um, marginalization. It's the race and the socioeconomic elements that, that contribute to circumstances of, of health disparity. Oh, this brings me to what we're seeking and, uh, and, and also what is it that we need? So I would like to say that, you know, a long time ago, uh, I was told that need, a need is not, uh, a want is not a need. They are not interchangeable. So what are we seeking and what do we need? So we are seeking a lot of things because we want them. But what is it that we, that we need? Well, generally speaking, we, we need a purpose. Okay, we need a purpose, to a reason to live, if you will. And believe it or not, even though some of us may be loners and introverts, we need our social connections. Um, we, we need to be around other people, we need to be nurtured, we need to feel safe, and we need to have relationships that are trusting relationships, people that we can confide in, people that we can rely on. That's really, really, really important. I'm not talking about the superficial stuff. I'm talking about the real stuff, the, the stuff that gets us through weathering to the other side. Self-care is a biggie. That's basically what I'm going to talk about in, in um, a good deal of, of, of my presentation. It's about self-care and, uh, and how we can achieve that because um, I always talk about the, the, the oxygen mass theory. I, I travel a lot. And you know, we all know, any of us who have traveled an airplane, that speech that the flight attendants give just before or just as you take off, and they do the whole demonstration with the oxygen mask, and they tell you, put the oxygen mask on yourself first, because if don't, you can't help anybody else. That's why most of the rest of this talk is going to be about self-care, because unless we are taking care of ourselves. There's no way we can can effectively help and care for those that we care for and care about. So we're going to really concentrate on on self care and what that means. Now, this one people may not think is a need, and and maybe it is not a need, but gratitude, gratitude is an important characteristic to be mindful of, um, you know, because gratitude feeds us. 
And while, you know, it, it it's not about being submissive to anybody, it's it's not about cozying up to somebody, it's about appreciating all of the things that that we have, taking account, taking stock of our blessings, so to speak. And 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 in that it it helps your your mental health. It helps the way you can um, engage on a daily basis. You know, negativity feeds itself. And the more negative we are, the more negative we become. Negative energy is a very, very difficult thing to hold, to manage, and to sustain. Positive energy, like gratitude, that feeds itself as well. So the more we can take on positive energy, the more we can cultivate a positive attitude, the better off we will be in coping with those things that, that are weathering us. Gratitude is one of the easiest ones to, to do because, it, it, again, it's just being mindful of the possibilities that surround us, of, of, of it's, it's looking for the bright side. It's looking for the silver lining. It's looking for the positive in any situation and appreciating. Now, here's my mantra. This is my main mantra for everything in life. And it's what I tell everybody because things happen for us, not to us. They happen for us. Even if, it's, even if you think it's the worst thing in the world, trust me. You, if you look hard enough, you will find a silver lining in that circumstance. So gratitude is one of the easiest things to begin cultivating on a skill basis, but it will, it's like planting seeds and it will grow and it will grow. And if you choose to cultivate the negative, know that the burdens you bear will get heavier and heavier and they will result in things like disease those origins of disease which becomes disease it becomes chronic it becomes life threatening and that is not the place we want to go the last thing we i want to talk about that we need is security we want security of body we want security in in our livelihoods um in in resources you know like the toilet paper shortage <laughs> Yeah, it might not be a security issue to many of us, but it sure does seem like one when the when the tree store shelves are bare. But um in, in morality, you know, and, and in family, health, property, um, we want to be safe. We want to go to bed at night knowing that we are safe and we will wake up tomorrow and start a new day. And while these things may not seem like they're important they are all important and without these these basic needs our lives will erode deteriorate and spiral into in it'll it's embracing the weathering and and we become like those images that that i showed you earlier it just takes its toll on us so here's that intermission i was talking about we're going to do a mindfulness minute I have a breathing exercise or technique. It's only going to take about two or three minutes, but for those of you who may need a bio break or who, who want to sit this one out, feel free. This is not physically exerting in any way. You can stay seated in your chair. Again, this is just a simple breathing exercise. It's primarily for beginners, but believe me, it helps clear your mind. It helps you to ground and it helps you um, to calm down and begin that attitude of gratitude. So I'm going to talk you through it. And, um, and as I do, if you can just follow with me, we're going to inhale as deeply as we possibly can to the count of four. I'm gonna count you through it. Then, then at four, we're going to pause and hold that breath to the count of seven. And then after the count of seven, we're going to exhale to the count of eight and start all over again. And we're going to do this three times. And before we get started, I just want you to, to do a check. 
do a physical check, feel how are you feeling in your body? How's your head feeling? How are your thoughts and your mind? Is your mind racing? Are you feeling not quite uh, energetic today? So, okay, check in with yourself and, uh, and we're going to begin. So on the count of one, again, take the deepest possible breath you can and fill your lungs. One, two, three, four. Hold, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Exhale, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And one. inhale, two, three, four. Hold, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, exhale, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, inhale, two, three, four, hold, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Exhale, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, you can breathe fully now. This is a really simple exercise that anyone can do, and you can um, take that with you. Remember the numbers, four, seven, eight, and, and count them out. Sometimes we need more than just three months. We might need five, maybe six, especially if you're having a rough day. But this will help get you centered and, um, and a little more relaxed to face what lies ahead of you. And you can, it's free. You can take it anywhere. You can do it anytime. And uh, hopefully it has been beneficial for many of you. All right. I mentioned earlier in my overview, I would uh, talk about my mnemonic called SNAP mnemonic. It's just, it's like an acronym. It, it just stands for different things. And, um, and the first letter in SNAP is S. And these are the basic things for self-care. This is about self-care. Um, actually, I teach this. This information came from one of the textbooks in my behavioral physiology course. And my students are always amazed when they see it because, of course, they're students and they're literally burning the midnight oil at every turn, um, trying to keep up with, with life in general and also with school. Um, so they're, uh, they always comment how much they enjoy this. It's easy to remember. It's not particularly easy to do, but we're going to start with the basics, and the basics are snap. Sleep. Make sure that you get good quality rest. It's difficult with in the days of coronasomnia, but the more you practice this, the more routine and regular it becomes, the better off you will be. Um, for most people, seven to eight hours enough. I know people that must have 10 hours of sleep. Personally, I get four to five hours of sleep and, and I'm, I'm pretty good to go. And then every now and then uh, I'll catch up a little bit more or I'll have a lazy day or two. But, um, but for most people, seven to eight hours is optimal. Do your best to get in a good sleep routine. Nutrition. Um, I don't care what you eat. I don't care if you want to do paleo, keto, if you want to do carbs, whatever. But know this, that new, you know, food is fuel for the brain. And you will not be able to think and do appropriately. It's just like that oxygen mass theory again. Unless you are feeding yourself appropriately. Unless you are giving your body adequate nutrition. I don't mean tons of food. I mean healthy food healthy diet. Um, you know, the body, the physical body 
places its primary emphasis on digestion. Believe it or not, digestion is where the body puts most of its energy. And if you can keep the body running, it's like gas in your car, but every now and then you need an oil change. Um, if you can keep that uh, going and that momentum going with a healthy diet, your body will be healthier for it. So remember, nutrition is very, very important. And again, what was one of the one of the first things I said of COVID? We all have that extra those that, that extra poundage. For some of us, it may even be the opposite. We've lost weight because we're so stressed out. We're we're not living in a healthy way. So sleep, nutrition, third activity. Again, that reminds with what I just said, that weight gain or maybe even that weight loss, regular exercise. Now, I'm not saying everybody has to crack that gym for two hours a day. I'm not saying that. But regular walks or even, um, you know, you can easily find chair exercises if you're less able you can find a lot of these. They had an excellent presentation just prior to this on, on yoga. There are a lot of things that you can start really simple with. They, they, you know, they can be free if you surf the web and you can find a routine or you can find a video on YouTube. Um, use it. Get some movement. Your body needs movement. Your body needs activity. Um, you know, and, and, and get literally get your juices flowing because that will help to keep you healthy. It will help to keep you balanced. And then again, I'm going to say personal relationships. That's the P in SNAP. I mentioned that before. You need to connect with others that you need to have, you know, quality relationships in your life. And even for those that are, that are not as, as, as deep and tight, you need to cultivate interest and curiosity um, in yourself uh, by doing that with others. Get to know people. Reach out. You know, we, we are not meant to live in isolation. And that's what causes aging. It causes degradation. So, you know, reach out. Even if you have to just reach out on Zoom, that, you know, that's why I don't get on Facebook because... <laughs> I start reaching out and the next thing you know, four hours is gone because I've been socializing on Facebook. So I have a Facebook page, but don't look to find me there because I try to stay away from it because I get too much socialism on Facebook. Um, and my my schedule can't handle that. But, uh, but personal relationships are very, very important. Okay, resilience. In doing my research for this talk, I know that uh, I know that resilience has sometimes gotten a, a negative rap in 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 library circles because um, you know I don't I don't know why and you know I heard some of the presentations about it but honestly um, I think resilience is a good good thing my my doctoral research has to do with intergenerational trauma um, but one of my groundbreaking uh, uh discoveries if you will is the fact that uh the physiology doesn't care it doesn't judge good or bad it just responds resilience um resilience comes from being able to process our experience in in a more healthy way that helps us to be regenerative it helps us to build our, our mental, emotional, and social muscles, if you will. I'm not saying that there isn't some point where people don't get beat down um, and or even come to a breaking point. What I'm saying is, though, that resilience isn't an all bad thing. Um, you know, and uh, so if you feel like you're being beat up, think about it, you know. It, I just had a week like that last week. Uh, I had a bunch of students giving me pushback for for not wanting to take responsibility for for their coursework. So they were trying to put it on me, saying that I didn't give them enough time, or uh, you know, I didn't appreciate what they had to say, or anything like that. And and I and I had to check myself. You know, is is this me? Am I being an ogre in the classroom, or? Uh, 
Or is it that they are a typical student and they don't want to be responsible for themselves, despite the fact that they are non-traditional adult students, but they're just getting back into school and, and getting back into higher education and they don't have good study skills or um, work skills yet. So, it, you know, think, think about, think about, you know, what's going on and, and see if it makes sense or if it doesn't see, see where there can be out value added in the circumstance by being aware of it and then, and process it that way. And again, as we reflect on these things, when we, when something, something jars us when it shakes us up and we can reflect on it and then care for ourselves through it. Hey, maybe it was me. Maybe I need to be a little bit more communicative or or ease up on on some of the work assignments. Maybe shorten the length of the papers that I assign. But then maybe it isn't. Maybe I need to firm up. Maybe I need to hold the line. Um, you know, I did that last term. I got a beautiful letter from a student who said, you really woke me up. I wasn't taking responsibility for myself. And I thank you because now I will. You're the only reason why I'm going to be able to graduate because had I failed your class as I deserved to do, I, I would have been expelled and, and not be able to finish my degree program. You allowed me to do that by giving me a second chance. So, you know, there's good that can come from everything, but but you want to be aware and pay attention to the things that jar your your stability or your sensitivities, process them and and think about them because not just just because somebody accuses you of something doesn't mean it's right. And um, but what is what is right and true is the fact that you were moved by the circumstance. So in that, in that movement, that's a sign. That's a feature for you. It's 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 an it says take take a closer look at this, dive deeper, and see what you can learn and gain from it. And in that, you will grow as a person. You will become stronger. You will become more resilient. And that's the positive, the upside of resilience. Resilience doesn't mean take as much as you can and keep on going. No, resilience means allow every opportunity to be introspective about who you are, what you can handle, and how it can contribute to your personal growth and um, and make you a, a stronger, wiser, more more capable, empowered person. All right, getting stressed out, listen to your thoughts, think about it, and again, be aware. Don't be afraid to contradict. Look at different alternatives to how you interpret things. Uh, you know, that student, I, I said, you know, I, I bailed him out more. I, you know, I gave him a lot of slack for uh, not just one course, for several courses and and that was the, that was it that was the last straw he just bailed on me and and then he came after the term was over saying i really need i can't fill this class what can i do to reverse my grade you know um i felt sympathy for him but i said you know you i just had a family member get sick who is elderly and i have to go take care of them i don't have time to work with you one on one during this break to help you reverse your grade, you're going to need to do it yourself. And if you're willing to do that, I'm willing to take another look at it. But was this about me? No, it was about him learning to, you know, step up and and um, step into his being responsible for himself. So you know, again, many ways to interpret a situation. We don't have to internalize everything. You know, let me let, let me let me bring in the term vocational awe at this point. I know a, that term was coined with regard to librarians and librarianship. And I want to say it's virtuous. You guys are wonderful. You know, in my book as an indigenous person, uh, I interpret and, and my sister's a librarian, by the way, I interpret librarianism uh, in 
in the indigenous perspective of being a wisdom keeper, because that's what you guys do. It's a sacred honor to hold the wisdom of your people, no matter when your people existed. And I know you believe in that. I know that you give service through heart and compassion, not just for the paycheck, because I teach, I know those paychecks, uh, they don't go that far. Um, but, uh, but the reality is, you know, um, vocational awe is real. And again, it's, it's why the resilience thing gets a bad rap because you think that you're expected to push, 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 push until you can't anymore and then keep going. And that's not true. Think of the oxygen mask. Think about how you won't be able to help anybody else if you're down for the count. Think about that. Because you do what you do because it is a sacred calling for you. But without you, none of us can do what we need to do. Don't think I didn't spend a lot of time in the library preparing for this talk. <laughs> I appreciate what you do. So, um, so positive pathways. I talked about that. That's what I talked about as far as uh, being aware, paying attention um, with the gratitude. These positive pathways reinforce and they go, they, they feed on each other. They, they contribute. Negative pathways work the same way, unfortunately. So it's your choice. You choose. Hopefully you'll choose a, a positive pathway. And may have it, you know. Um, storytelling, storytelling is is one way to, um, you know, to tell yourself. It's self talk. It's, it's helping to develop a, a habit or a practice. Um, okay. So. I'm not sure where I'm at. So self-care is important. You need it to function. It contributes to your energy, your vitality, your confidence. And, uh, you know, and that contributes to your physical health, your mental, spiritual, and lifestyle. This is just some food for thought here. Marco, how am I on? How am I doing on time? Yeah, so we've got about twelve minutes on for the whole thing. Yes. Okay. All right. Well, so the rest of these things, again, I hate people read slides to me because I can read. So I'm going to assume that most of you can read, if not all of you, and I'm just going to step step through my slides here and talk a little bit um all of this just reiterates most of what i said in my talk and how do we practice self-care my powerpoint will also be with the conference materials and i'm sure you'll be able to access it um after the fact so uh you know if you don't have time to read everything that's here know that these these notes can can be found after after this talk i want to share a cool idea with you um create a self-care box one for yourself one that you can share um put stuff in there that makes you have positive energy positive thoughts happy memories put it there and then and then break it out when you're having a rough day or a bad time, uh, let it remind you of the goodness in your life. Um, and you know, you can, you can scale this. I have a traveling one. It, it's a tiny, you know, it's, it's tiny. You can literally get them for, for a buck at the craft store, the little boxes. And, and I put like a, a little crystal, a little rock, a, you know, I, I have these little miniature things that, that, that are meaningful to me 
and I carry this because I travel a lot and, and it, and it helps. So, you know, if nothing else, do that, start there. Not all of this is brain science. Uh, you know, uh, create your own rituals. A ritual is something that's repeatable that you call a ritual and that has significance to you. Uh, we have rituals, baptisms, weddings, birthdays. We, we have cultural rituals. You may have, uh, religious rituals or, 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 or your own cultural rituals, but you can make your own. This, um, when you create a ritual, like you are declaring this to the universe that this is this, this, this will help you to become aware. It will help you to initiate change in your life. Um, consider, uh, consider a ritual, uh, just like the four, seven, eight breathing technique. Make a ritual. Maybe you need a calming ritual. Do that, you know. Um, but but in order to be a ritual, it has to be, you know, you have to formalize it in some way. Meaning formalize it in in, in giving it a structure and make it repeatable and 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 do the same thing every time. Because rituals do have power. Uh you know, shore up your foundation. Because here's the thing, the four seven eighting technique can calm you down, it can center you, but is it going to last? What is lasting is to get down to your foundation, like that image I showed early on in the talk. Get down in the foundation and start rebuilding life. Because even with the weather, if the weathering has taken its toll, the only way around that is to start to rebuild. So think about your circumstances and 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 how you're going to rebuild and and start by using these simple and tricks to build yourself up we all have reinvented ourselves this is one of those opportunities it's not a chore it's an opportunity to to rebuild yourself this is the silver lining that has come from all of this weathering, from all of these devastating things that we've been living through make it an opportunity Okay, so I'm down to the Q&A. Margo? Hey, Wendy, this is Bobby. I'm going to um, jump in here real quick for okay. a second. Thank you so much for your this presentation and your perspective and insight. And I can see from the tweets that there was a lot of positive response to what you were saying. Um, but there is one thing I want to jump in on, and um, I want to remind everyone here that your weight is not an indicator of your health or your worth. Um, and I know we all have some internalized things and I'm just gonna share some personal stuff at this point um, because this is a conference that I have put my heart and soul into and so I'm gonna be a little vulnerable. Um, we have all gone on a lot of journeys during this pandemic. Some have been short, some are long. We're still in the middle of a lot of them. Uh, me personally, one of the best things that has happened to me during this time is learning to love and accept my body um, for exactly how it is right now at this moment. It has carried me through some unbelievable trials um, of my life. It has lifted me up in the happiest moments. It has been a comfort to the people I love in their hardships and in their joy. Um, and I really want to stress that um, your weight is not your worth. Um, if you can do movement and find joy in that, that is great. And I want you to do that. Everyone should be eating as healthy as possible. Um, but you should also eat for joy. Um, food is, is fuel and bread is delicious. <laughs> you can have gluten. Um, so I just want to kind of re-steer us back on, uh, on that and, and share that personal information. Um, but Wendy, I'm gonna hand it back over to you. Lots of great comments. People are really enjoying um, the direction and the talk about uh, the, the pyramid and the thing that you showed. So um, thanks, great. I'm gonna get off the stage. Thank you. Thank you, Bobby. Not fat shaming, not, um, you know, I'm not saying what your ideal weight is. I'm just saying that a lot of us have allowed the weathering to take a toll on us. So I'm encouraging more healthy behaviors. Uh, so just to clarify that, because uh, I myself am, you know, I have my own issues. And so, yeah, not trying to do that. 
So, um, Mar Marco, Q and A. Yes. Yeah, so one of the really interesting, so there were some good questions, and one was about, do we have psychological surge capacity? We've been hearing a lot about surge capacity in the hospitals around coronavirus, and the person who put it in was talking about the workplace, you know, and supporting your staff, but I also thought about clinicians that support our mental health. Uh, do you have any thoughts on that? Do we have capacity? Um, not it depends it depends on on the individual and how well they have how, how strong is that foundation so sometimes you know, the storm can come along and it just blows the house right off its foundation uh it just tears it up even including the foundation and other times things are uh are more uh, able to withstand. And and the, so the surge capacity is really more of a result of um, how well you have prepared yourself or how strong your foundation is. Some of us are, are um, more susceptible and more vulnerable to stress and pressure. Uh, and, and we're more vulnerable to even um, buckling under the pressure because we have not prepared ourselves well enough. And when I say prepare, we're not particularly resilient because we've been enabled a lot of the times. Um, those of us who have struggled through uh, greater challenges and have been able to find that resilience in ourselves are more able to tolerate these things. And so it's gonna vary on an individual basis. And, um, and if you find yourself getting stressed to that point, whether it's in a short period of time or over a longer period of time, then I highly encourage you to get some professional help, get some counseling, mm -hmm. um, because you know th there's no shame in that. We all need, and that's the relationship piece I'm talking about. We all need someone to to be able to lean on, to be able to help support us through some of the trickier times. Yeah. Uh, people were wondering if you could just, uh, you're, sh you're still sharing your slides. Could you go back to show the pyramid slide? A couple of people were interested in seeing again. Okay. Um, and um, um, hold on. Yeah. Tell me when to stop. I'm not. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I don't know which one was the, pyr the pyramid slide. Ah, maybe. Maybe uh, there wasn't I one. I don't, I don't know. Can somebody? Uh, uh, yeah, I'm sorry. It wasn't, a, it wasn't the pyramid, but it looked like Maslow's hierarchy of needs, which is a pyramid. So that was what was happening in my brain. Uh, okay. um, it was the need. Oh, okay. That, 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 this one? This information is, in fact, based on, on Maslow's hierarchy, but it's just a, a little bit more. Is this what you were? Is this what you guys were re referencing? Oh, I the, think that's it. Somebody yes, said I, I'm, the snap one. Okay, hold on. No, I. Okay. This one. Yeah, that's that's great. And um, so we're really at time now. So I know the recordings are going to be available. Bobby, are there ways to get the slide? That's a common question. Yeah. So we've asked the speakers to send us a final copy of their slides. And we're going to get those on the Hay Summit website. So what you're going to see probably in about a week is the recordings on the Summit website slides, links to the slides, and also if the speakers have provided us with any other resources, those will be there too. And you will get okay. an email about that. So here are some recommendations. In my slide, I will be giving them to Bobby. And if anybody wants to contact me, my website is nativeteachings.org. And uh, my email is drwendy at nativeteachings.org. And um, if you want to go to my website, I have a freebie for you. So. Right. Okay. All right. Well, thank you very much. Um, the, so everybody, the next session is starting in 30 minutes. Um, so we do encourage you to get up away from your screen. Give yourself a little bit of a break. And, um, and then if you come back before 30 minutes is up,
you might want to check out the arena where we have some booths or the lounge to connect with your fellow attendees. So thanks everybody for attending this session and we'll see you in the next one. Thank you. Thanks for watching. This video was produced by the Network of the National Library of Medicine. Select the circular channel icon to subscribe to our channel, or select a video thumbnail to watch another video from the channel.